Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I am Nisa from THS Wrestling. We are live here at the Neff Lounge backstage of Bloodsport. And I'm sitting with the legend, Josh Barnett. How you doing, man? It's a good day. Uh, got, a lot of, got a lot on my mind tonight, but uh, glad to be here. I'm, I'm happy to have you for a quick moment. I really wanted to ask you, I said a lot on your mind. This has been two times, now the third time, and it's finally happening. You versus Moxley. How does it feel? Uh, it feels good uh, to finally be able to, to see this thing through and, and meet, meet this dude in the ring. You know, I know that there is there's no lack of fight in John Moxley whatsoever. And, uh, and I've fought a lot of technical, highly skilled you know, dudes that were supposed to be the next great thing and smashed them up. It's one thing to find someone with that's super technical, that has all the quote unquote uh, you know, things on paper that you look for. It's another thing to find a guy who is literally just the embodiment of fight. That's a rarity. And I've seen a million dudes who are just born and bred, like fighter through and throughout, just go out there and beat the ever living hell out of people that were supposed to be there better. Now you win this match tonight. Who do you call out? I don't. Okay. I don't call people out. I'm the top of the mountain. Yeah. Yeah, let them you know, know. They got to call me out. Yeah. And, uh, and most aren't really brave enough to do that in the first place. Now, so, Bloodsport, if anyone doesn't know, if this is your first time and you've been under a rock, the difference between Bloodsport and any other wrestling uh, show, promotion, whatever you want to call it, every match has to end in a TKR submission. Uh, yes, it either, it's either by a knockout of some sort or, or submission. There is no pinfalls. Uh, you know, we're, we're here to finish people off. And this is six. Now, what do you think is, in your opinion, is the main ingredient that keeps people clamoring for more? Because each one has gotten bigger and better, and people can't wait. They're already talking about seven. They're already trying to match you up with somebody else. Um, well, uh, I think a really key ingredient is just the, 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 uh, the, the recipe of the wrestlers themselves, having going and handpicking the, the best out there whether or not you'd even heard of them you know there's somebody they're like oh well who is this guy well just because you don't know about them doesn't mean that i haven't gone uh scouted them and seen that oh there's there's something magic here and your your lack of knowledge on this person does not negate their 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 uh level of ability and so by bringing in these these really incredible wrestlers in an environment that is made for the pure the 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 best technical wrestling that you can find like the most direct raw stripped down version of wrestling not everybody can do this a lot of folks need you know they need uh, an incredible costume they need gimmicks and shirts and catchphrases and they need all kinds of other stuff you, you don't get any of that here so if you if you if you got to lean on all these other items other than you then blood sport is not the place for you now, we've seen a lot of talk on the internet before I, before Ro has a very important question. I do. Yeah, but we've seen a lot of talk on the internet about best technical wrestler. A lot of talk from Pete Dunne, a lot of talk from Daniel Bryan. If those two were to square off, who you think would be considered the best out of them? Well, Dunne's younger, right? Uh, he does have some weight on him, I believe, but I think my money would have to be on Brian, uh, Dan Daniel Bryan uh, because, for one, I've actually worked with him in the past and toured with him in New Japan Pro Wrestling, and I know the kind of time he puts in um, outside of the ring and making himself a better, more talented uh, wrestler. So for, for my knowledge, I would, go with, I would go with Daniel. Nice. Now there's a lot of things happening in the combat, combat sports world, but the one thing that people are really talking about is fellow wrestler Ben Askren and his upcoming fight. What do you think of his chances against Paul, who's been boxing a lot for three years he doesn't have any he doesn't have the accolades that ben does but can can ben pull a win by tying him up and what, what are your thoughts on that i mean maybe i would say that in some sense you've got Askren, who is a far better athlete and competitor than logan paul in every sense of the word um and he's competed at the highest levels of competition in as a combat sports athlete so the grit to get out there and compete is absolutely in his favor. Could he figure out some way to ugly this thing up? Maybe. 
could his awkwardness on his feet make it more difficult for someone that's so um, technically more tech who is more technically sound as a boxer? Yeah, it, it could happen. Um, but I would say this is Logan Paul's fight to lose because he is competing in his strength. And by the way, he was a wrestler too, but man, these guys get on the mats and, and Ben Askren would annihilate him yeah. immediately. Yeah. So um, in a way, you know, Askren's fighting handicapped, but money talks, right? Um, do I get one more question in? Is there a favorite undercard tonight? Something that you're looking forward to see? Um, all of them, really. I mean, I know that's a cop-out answer, but this, all of it matters to me. Yeah. Not just anyone, and everyone is going to be um, they're going to be different in their own respects. They're all going to be a, a really distinct match, and I just I want to see what fireworks come of it. Um, they're not on this card for because I, I don't believe in them. They're not on. They're not here to be a part of blood sport because there's anything about them that could be discarded or or you know looked over. My last question, and let you go because I know you have a lot on your schedule and a lot on your plate. Legacy, blood sport. What does that mean to you hearing those two together? Legacy is something that comes with time, uh, but it's not. And, I, and I, when I make my, my moves for putting these things together and making these shows, yeah, legacy is a consideration. But right now I have to focus on tonight's event and, and where we go from here after that. And, and, and in time, if we do the right things, if we stick to the ethos, um, we, I believe that we will have a legacy in this sport. But... It's not for looking ahead. It's for it's for staying in the now, and uh, and and always checking back in with why are we doing this and making sure we stay on that path. Absolutely. Now before we let you go, I want to bring up one other thing. I, you're a, you're a Renaissance man. You got a lot of things going on, but can we trade you some vodka for your whiskey? I've heard a lot of great things about <laughs> your whiskey. I you know what we have a vodka coming on the market too. And uh, our our vodka is a it's a triple triple source where um, we are using uh, winter wheat, uh, barley, and uh, I think God I'm trying to remember it, it's a uh, maybe a corn might even be the third and we are putting it out there at 84 instead of 80 or 90 and it was developed with a mixologist named Josh Josh Goldman and the idea was to make a vodka that would make the best martini possible and so the way that we've really you know we we're starting with a good source but a lot of places can make i mean honestly the base of a vodka is the easiest part if you just want to spend the money and the time well there the water is the difference and so um our water has been specifically formulated via its mineral concentrations over lots of testing with our head distiller who used to work for Pfizer and has a PhD in chemical engineering. Crazy. And so we're, we're working on the, the water concept. Competition. So you're not going to let us sponsor next year's event? <laughs> I wouldn't stop you. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I would love to, to, to have you guys take a taste and, and even just to see what your impressions are as people in the vodka Absolutely. industry. We'll, we'll yeah, yeah. And as far as the whiskey, would love to have you try it if I can even get some of my own. Yeah. I mean, it's like, <laughs> Isn't that a motherfucker? Well, yeah. So uh, I've had to. We know that I've struggle. had to go to stores and buy my own bottles, not buybacks, but just buy it so that I could give to somebody else, or so that I could have one uh, of a of a release. It's, it's sometimes in, easier that way. It is. Yeah. It is. But uh, yeah, uh, I have no problem bringing booze around and and, and sharing the, sharing the 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 fruits of the labor, man. I love this stuff. Let's do it. Yeah, let's have yeah. a whole vodka tasting it's session a, going. Blood sport. Blood sport. Cheers. 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 I like that. He just went and did the whole thing. Well, that's an excellent vodka. Thank you. Yeah, guys, by the way, if your vodka is very neutral, and especially in nose, then it's good. If your vodka's got a whole bunch of flavors in it and it's not a flavored vodka, this is facts. it's shit. This is fact. You know? <laughs> yeah, this is nice and subtle, very soft on the palate. Is it 80 proof? Yes. Nice and soft, doesn't taste particularly young. I know it has been chilled down, but it's not exceedingly cold. No, we just this, Yeah. Yeah, guys, guys, don't go out there trying to get all these vodkas and get right, all right, right. weird about it. This is this <laughs> is not a scotch. Yeah, people in a yeah. grocery store. Th like this needs to be, 
you know, you can run it through all the fucking filters you want to. Why, it, if you didn't use good water to begin with, you fucked up. Like you don't. Facts. Austrian. Yeah. Because guess what? All of it goes up to 190 proof on the off the still first before it's watered down. Uh, odorless, smell tasteless. Well, that's the start. The water makes the difference. And just use good products to to do your distillation runs, and you won't get trash. Ladies and gentlemen, you just got a master class about vodka. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you.